There are lots of different types of options. So I mentioned already the Asian option, which is actually settled not at a particular point in time, but at an average price over a period. Um, so the three classic types of options are Asian, American, and European. And um, the European and American are very similar. They have a final expiry. So it will be a, literally a time at 19.30 p.m. on a particular day. Uh, we can find it very easily. You can Google ICE and you can find when the expiries are. The only difference between them is the European option can only be exercised at that point. So you can't choose to exercise it early. So if you decided, I, I brought a call, that gives me the right to be long, I want to be long, you can't do that early. With an American option, you can do it any time up to or on expiry. That's not maybe as significant as you think it, it is, potentially. In general, and when we go through an example, we might see this. In general, you would never exercise an option early because when you do, you're giving up your optionality. You have to wait, but you can still, um, you know, if you know, let's say you bought a call at $60 European and the market currently is at 64 So you know when it gets to expiry, if the market hasn't changed, you can exercise your right to be long at 60, the strike price. The market's currently at 64. You might think, well, I'm nervous. What if the market drops before I get to exercise the option? But if you know that you can be long, say it's 500 lots, or you can sell futures now, 500 lots, and if the market drops, you'll get the money back on the futures. If the market goes up, you're short, but you know that you can exercise your length here as well. So you can effectively exercise the option by selling futures and taking profit. If, if we have a strike price of 60 and we have a market that's moving all over the place, if we just wait for the last exercising point, we're giving up all that volatility. We can, the option gives us the ability to say, if I want to, I can be long, so I could sell here. I don't want to be long anymore, I'll buy back, I'll sell, I'll buy back, I'll sell, I'll buy back. And you're extracting, you're extracting money all the time from the option. And that, that's the one key thing I think that it's important to take away from, from options is they give you something and you can, you can use that to make money. The other options on here generally are dangerous um, and they are created by uh, marketers, usually Goldman Sachs, um, to try and sell to companies. Bermudan option can only be exercised on specific days. So you've got to, I mean, why? Why would, you, why would you need that? A barrier option, the price has to pass a certain barrier before it can be exercised. You actually get quite interesting barrier options in, f in financial markets marketed by banks to ordinary people like you and me. Um, I have actually done a number of them where you know, we, we're in the UK, so we look at the FTSE 100, and a bank will often sell you a structured product, and they say, well, if, if the FTSE drops to 50% of its current level, we trigger the option, but if it doesn't, we don't do anything, except that above, if it goes up, you get seven times the increase in the FTSE. So if the FTSE goes up a little bit, 10%, I get 70% of my investment in addition to getting the money back. And all I give up for that is if it does drop to 50% and doesn't go back up again, I start to lose money. So I've done quite a few of these because to me that I can, I can ratify that risk. I can say, I think it's highly unlikely the stock market's gonna go down by 50% and I'm prepared to take that risk in order to get a much bigger return if it goes up. Um, so there are interesting options, but in general, you just it's just exercise caution, buyer beware. What a classic barrier option would say is if you buy a call at $60, say, in Brent, there is in a, that's the strike price, but there is an additional barrier level set, which might be $50, and it might say you've got the right to be long at 60, but only if the market has gone down to 50 first and then gone back up again. So it's, it's, it's incredibly hard to model um, a basic option is really easy to model and to know what your exposure is. 
Something like this is very, very hard. Um, very hard indeed. The binary option is also very commonly mis missold. Miss the binary option is, is all or nothing. So it says um, if the market goes over the strike price, you either get one, or if it doesn't, you get nothing. And um, it, it's, people like them because they think, well, that's simple. So if the market goes up, I get money back. If it doesn't, I don't. That's nice and simple. But they usually miss sold because they, it's very easy to hide the fact that you're charging people too much money for something like that. So there's a lot of warnings around not trading binary options. Um, again, very hard to model as well because you can't, it doesn't matter how far up the market gets, you still just get the same reward. So it's a, ba it's a classic gamble, classic bet. People talk often about exotic options, which are these, and vanilla options, which are these. And these are okay to trade, these you need to be cautious with. The BP derivatives desk in the 90s and 2000s was supposedly one of the cleverest in the market. And they were good, but they did, uh, I think, a Bermuda option mixed with something called a Swoption. And um, they completely misvalued it in their books and lost an awful lot of money. So um, it's, it, it, is, it is complex um, when, you, when you start to get to some of these things. So I'd stick with the simple stuff.